Nash. What's going on, everybody? It's Get in the Trunk, Season 6, continuing here with Episode 5. I hope everybody's having a fantastic week. We are uh, we're having a fantastic week here. We get to play a little Delta Green, a little mid-summer Delta Green. It's getting hot out there, and it's getting hot in this game. Jesus. Things are getting wild. Things are getting spicy. Pre-show, Troy put it out there early, confidently. I have a plan. <laughs> Makes me scared whenever Roger comes to and says that. Whatever that plan is, I'm sure we'll find plan. out soon enough. <laughs> What's that, Francis? No, just, <laughs> I have a plan. <laughs> I have a plan. <laughs> I love that. Things are getting wild in uh, in the in the world of our Delta Green game. <laughs> there you go, Skid. Uh, things are getting wild in our Delta Green game where our agents have found themselves uh, in a position to have to rescue one of their own in uh, in a caper like situation, and uh, and and I'm excited for I'm excited for the show today. But first, let me ask you uh, quickly because I've I've got a decision to make uh, coming up for myself uh, this weekend, and I'm curious uh, your guys' input. What you guys do with your summers down the shore? We've talked before, like beach and stuff like that. When you are in that summer vibe, and you have uh, and you're down at the beach, at the shore, whatever, and you have the choice between sit on the beach, swim in the ocean or sit by the pool at the hotel, swim in the pool. Which do you tend to go with first? What, what's your preference, Francis? Ooh, you look torn, so I want to go to you that's first. That's a real tough one. Um, if we're talking about like swimming, like <laughs> Troy I wanna, says that's not a tough one. It's, it's not. not. No, <laughs> listeners. Uh, I mean, if we're talking about just like swimming around, like we want to swim in the pool or swim and get like laps in, like exercise wise, I would say by the pool. But like, if I'm just, just fun swimming, just like, just just water fun, like splashing around. I'm saying. <laughs> that <laughs> I'm, sounded creepy. Now, uh, now you push it into something fun. Water weird. Fun. You water. got your kids into water, water fun? fun. <laughs> you guys are like water fun? I'm like, let's have a little water fun. You want to splash uh, around with like, me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> there were no kids involved in this. Um, the, the, no, the, the, I, would, I would go to the beach because the beach is more fun just to, you know, if you're boogie boarding or you just like, so, you know. If you want to snorkel or something like that, yeah. But uh, are you if a you're boogie boarding type of dude? I might. I've been known to boogie once in a while. <laughs> You've been uh, known to boogie. I've been known to boogie uh, on the board sometimes and without. Uh, nice. But uh, yeah, no. I, I guess I, I would go beach. <clears throat> I would beach. Go beach. Okay, yeah, Troy. It wasn't a. De- it wasn't a tough decision for you. No, you got to go beach. If it's like a uh, Airbnb or a private pool, then yeah, you do that after after the beach. Though you beach it up, then you come by, you hang at the pool. But if it is a hotel pool, uh, no, you just just hang out at the beach. One could say they're both public pools, but the beach you can <laughs> spread out. You don't have people flopping around on top of you. You don't have to swim next to another half naked human being. <laughs> Just rubbing their skin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you go, you go to- beach. Now, but of course, distance is where you got kids. Distance from hotel to beach is key. Is it 20 steps? Is it a 10-minute walk? If it's a 10-minute walk, you stay at the pool. Is it um, a 10-minute drive? Oh, what are you doing? Uh, you you got to get a new hotel. <laughs> <laughs> You're the wrong Check hotel. out of that hotel. Get a new hotel. Sydney, your thoughts. Beach or pool? Come beach on. no beach you no. can't surf in a pool can't surf in a pool and also i don't know if you're someone who does not like to swim probably pool because what you're doing is you're laying out in the sun and on the beach without like the reprieve of the water that is a desert you know like you're just frying in sand that gets all over you so i understand why for some people they find the beach unenjoyable but that's for people who don't go in the ocean. That's right. the point of the beach. Right. So it's crazy to me if people prefer a pool over a, a beach with the glorious ocean. You can swim so far. You can swim so far and then just mean? be alone, floating. <laughs> like you can swim so far. Like out into the, into the ocean? Yeah, Impossibly. you just keep it's going. Not great. You know, you can't. It's all regulated. <laughs> no, you just go as long until they tell you to stop. Until they tell you to stop. And then until you just the fl- current float. takes you. And then out. you just turn around and give them the finger once that whistle blows. <laughs> but then you, it's like quiet and the water's colder out there and you just float. You can just float, let it carry you in the rip current, you know, down on the beach. And then you get a nice walk back to where you're looking for your spot, can't find it. You're like, I don't know where I put my blanket. I have no idea. And that's awesome. Where am I? Oh, this Mexico? is an interesting glimpse into your beach and, and ocean. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. I'm a little let. 
What about sharks? You're just going to oh, go man. out there, swim deep by yourself. What if you get eaten? That doesn't happen at a pool. The well, odds I guess are so it's my slim. time. I the don't odds, know. <laughs> the odds are so slim that a shark's yeah. going to eat you. And if it's going to eat you, what a way to go. What a way to go. Life. You <laughs> she died doing life. what she loves, swimming too far out into the ocean, past where the lifeguards say to go. <laughs> Sid, my guess is between a pool or the ocean, or if we threw a third one in, a nightclub, you'd prefer the nightclub based on your lighting today, which is driving me insane. <laughs> is this going to be the entire episode? We're going to be flashing lights behind you? Multicolored Do you want me to lights? set it to one color? <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't it. know the it mood. It also changes the color of your skin every time it changes <laughs> no. because of the camera white I didn't white know balance. the mood of the episode yet, so I'll just pick it's something. It's not nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> While Skid answers this question, I'll change my lighting. You can, you can decide. Well, you know, you can wait and to see and until you settle into a mood for this episode. No, that's no, sure. no. <laughs> <laughs> the mood is blue. Well, you know oh. what? I, I honestly felt like I liked the idea of the changing lights. I was just like, if you could just set it to change every few minutes, you know what I mean? No. So it's like subtle and you barely notice it as opposed to like, fum, 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 fum. <laughs> uh, skid, uh, based on your skin tone, you look like a real beach guy. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the beach. I liked it a lot. Uh, I'm not a strong swimmer, but I love playing in the waves. <laughs> yes, me too. Or at least I me did too. until I almost drowned. <gasps> oh, no. See, that's <sighs> real. That's some scary. Fire Island. Scary. Like 2009 or so. And uh, Undertow was like pulling me out and I was just like, oh shit. I was like, I'm definitely going to die. Oh God, it's a yeah. horrible feeling. And so ever since, and there's no lifeguard or anything, I was just like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really used to enjoy it. I used to just I just jump around on the waves. It's great. You got to respect the ocean. You got to respect the ocean, especially yeah, the when ocean, you, the sea is always right. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's right. Don't fuck around. Like, you guys, right. th that horrible feeling when you like crawl back out from the riptide and you like can't even breathe or talk. <laughs> yeah, you like have no voice. You're like help me. Yeah, it's like, you just. <laughs> it, it's scary. It's so scary. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah, getting caught uncontrollably in in uh, a riptide or the undertow or even a real rough wave, which ends up being like the the best of all of those <laughs> is yeah. like, because, you know, you just sometimes you'll just take physical harm over that feeling of being pulled out and unable to swim against it. I mean, it's just terrifying. Yeah, just like watching the shoreline recede. Yeah. You know, like, no, it's like. It's real scary. I don't think I can get back. I was like, it was, woo. <sighs> Never again. Yeah. Never again. <laughs> Wait, so you'll never go swimming in the ocean again? That's what you're saying? I don't think so. Wow. Really? I, you got you so. got to go to the right beaches. Like honestly like like uh I'll have water in them. <laughs> <laughs> ones with like a good long uh uh shelf before it drops off. You know what I mean? Like maybe like I don't know, South Florida or something like that. Mm. But like, you know, like in Hawaii, there in Oahu, north shore of Oahu, it just drops off. It's all like coral and then it drops off and you're like, fuck. That's why all the big uh, wow. big wave surfers go out there but if you fuck around out there that undertow will take you and you will never be seen again and there's no yeah, pe people die all the time yeah out there yeah like like oh, yeah. every year just like vacationers being e stupid yep die in that surf like yep. it's just it's crazy yep uh, we, when I was in Hawaii for my honeymoon, we went to one of those beaches and it was on a hotel beach that we, we were not staying at that hotel. We just like kind of went to visit their beach for the day because they had a great beach. And uh, I remember sitting, well, first of all, when we got there, it was like, we were excited to like snorkel and stuff and it was all shut down. Like all the snorkeling thing and everything was shut down. It had been open that morning. It was shut down by 11 a.m. because a woman had already broken her leg <laughs> and was like taken away by EMTs. So they were like, oh no more snorkeling today in the uh, in the surf. It's too violent. Oh, yeah. So so we just end up sitting on the beach and uh, get cocktails and stuff, hanging out, having a great time. And um uh, my wife is like, I'm going to go down and just dip my toes in the water. And the water was like, like you walk to the edge of the beach and then it dropped down, like the sand dropped down at, at like a hill down to the water so that the beach was nice and never gets wet from, from the rising tides. Right. So she walks down this like hill and I don't see her again. And I'm just like, <laughs> read my book. <laughs> a few minutes later, she comes staggering up over like the side of the sand, soaking wet sand all over her 
And she was like, I was in about a foot and a half of water and she got rocked yep. by a wave yep. that just oh. like oh. pushed her up on the sand. And she was like, there's sand in everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we not. weren't staying at this hotel. We were like a, like a lift drive away from our hotel. Yo, that's real. And it was just like, oh, it was brutal. Yeah. And you couldn't even go in to like rinse off. She was like, I'm going nowhere near that surf. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, yeah. It's, it's, it can be, it can well fuck you up down there. <laughs> it can it mess you fuck up. Fuck you right up. Speaking of fucking you right up, man, <laughs> do we have a juicy one today? Uh, by way of a brief recap, Roger Cumstone has stolen another car and put another guy in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, Two in a one day. Guy, he let one go, and then he, he, he let one go. Yeah. Another he let one, one go. Uh, <laughs> this time, stole another car, put another dude in the trunk. As uh, Vicky and Neil are trying to deal with this. Um, to, to deal with being under, uh, I'm sorry, being uh, on the run, right? Being basically, their names have been put out there by Dr. Dallin with the Massachusetts State Police. Apparently, this has been communicated to Boston police, you would assume. And uh, their names and faces are on television, except Vicky. Vicky's face is not on there, but her name is very strange, slightly different looking Vicky. But Roger, Bobby, Neil, all up there in the newscast saying these people are escaped patients from the Dorchester house. They could be armed and dangerous. Stay away from them and take great care. While Dr. Down is also saying, please return our patients. We just want them returned safely. Well, they found one of them, Bobby, who has been physically in almost a comatose state for the two days since he has dropped from this touch of whatever this clown was, had uh, poisoned his blood in some way. And through uh, Vicky calling 911 and getting EMTs there early, they probably saved his life. Without that, we probably would not have Bobby anymore. Well, they rushed him to the hospital. They did emergency blood transfusions. And during this whole process, Bobby seems to have mentally been taken somewhere else. He's been in a city called Yathil dealing with some sort of war that he can't really understand with combatants that are mind blowing. A young Roger Cumstone joins him in World War II fatigues as they try to push their way through under the lead of his father, the colonel, to reconnect with Company D, with D Company in order to push through to the factory to get to the palace. All very strange things to Bobby, almost like he's in a dream. And as he's trying to sift through the details, uh, he is approached by Private Lobulus, a young private who has a radio back pack on his back, which was initially found by all of the PCs in Abigail Wright's apartment in 1995. And even then looked like an old World War II communicate broadcast backpack. So um, through that, there are obviously uh, different messages that are coming through. But the most important thing that happens last week is that Private Labalas reveals to Bobby that he does not remember how he got here either, except that he was fighting in France. He heard this strange uh, transmission come over of a British voice describing seeing a play called The Yellow Emperor. And then the next thing Private Labalas knew, he was indescribably in a platoon he didn't understand with a command structure he didn't understand in a city he'd never heard of fighting a war he had no part in. It's all very strange, but he's trying to act like he knows what's going on here. Meanwhile, Bobby is trying to crack a code. As Bobby works on that code, he gets one success and starts to get some results that uh, that lead him to believe he might know a place in this city where these British soldiers are trying to direct the Americans in order to make their way through the lines of the Black Wind, a a, or a group that is clad in black uniforms with red fezes and old like World War I style rifles, very uh, bolt action rifles. Very strange. We cut back to Roger, who has this new car now and picks up Vicky and Neil. Neil, who has completely shaved his head in an attempt to not appear as his old self. He picks them up in the car and Neil is adamant that they need to get to New York City to find the Hotel Broad Alban there so that he can get where he needs to be. Roger wants to do this as well, but he worries about Bobby. Vicky makes the decision that we have to let Bobby go. We have to leave him behind because he is compromised. The cops are there. The journalists are already there. The hospital has him. 
and there's nothing we can do about it. Roger says, Roger that, but we're going to get him right now. <laughs> Makes a U-turn as I pictured in my mind with a red Acura and begins heading toward the hospital. That's where we ended last week. We pick it up this week and Roger has a plan. But before we get to that, let's open on a black screen with just, uh, let's just open with audio only. Uh, black screen and fading up is this sound. We keep hearing this code over and over again and we'll slowly fade up on the scene. And in the corner of this room, listening to this code over and over again, we see Bobby trying to work his way through it. He's writing things down. He's trying to figure out the last pieces of this puzzle before he heads to his father, uh, the Colonel, Colonel Walford, to give him the information he needs to advance on this place in the, in the most appropriate way. <sighs> Bobby. Yes. Give me another what, what were we rolling? Sigint. Sigint. Another Sigint roll. <clears throat> oh, Sigint. see what kind of progress Bobby is making on this. Come thing. on, Sigint. Ooh, 36 under 43. Nice. Boom, Mom. He did that's, it That's a crit again. success. Damn. 36. 36 under 43. Bobby does it again. <laughs> Sigint's my strong spook right there. Bobby... As you start to look at the other numbers, you are you're trying to piece together, you know, <laughs> what they could mean. There are so many different meanings for these numbers that are rather generic. But almost as you keep rolling this SIG in, as you keep focusing in on it, it's almost as if your mind is in many places at once. You start to become a little bit more aware of perhaps the surroundings of your physical body you hear the, the, the number four and then 29 over and over in this code in your mind, you're hearing the, the, uh, the, uh, the, this British voice coming over the radio, giving you these numbers. And you know, four, maybe not so much, but 29 is a number that comes up as you remembering 1995. And you keep thinking of these numbers that could have some significance. 29 is uh, the is the day number in which uh, uh, Barbus was first activated by Dr. Dallin. When he was brought into the hospital, it was May 29th. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, maybe, oh man, years and years later. Well, where did he have you go? He had you go to the Dorchester house. You remember. You remember looking at a list of the personnel of the Dorchester house as you researched this place. There were exactly 29 employees in the Dorchester house. Huh. Like, could, it, could, it be, could it be the Dorchester house? And as you're thinking of these, you hear 29 in your head the same time you hear it said by a voice, a voice that seems almost like it's coming from another room. Yeah, he's in 29. He's in 29. And then voices coming in. You'll hear it from time to time. And suddenly you start to think, hold on. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm in 29. I'm in room 29. But you, but it's a strange sort of feeling trying to put together what, what that might be. Uh, four? What is four? You, you've heard, you've heard four mentioned outside in this other body from these other voices. Fourth. You've heard fourth. Maybe fourth floor? perhaps uh -huh. trying to exist in two places at once you continue working on this code I can tell you mechanically you have to succeed at a certain number of SIGINT checks before you fail that number of SIGINT checks and then you'll see you know, what the end result is in either way uh -huh. but already you're getting pieces of information that are going to be very helpful to you um, and let's fade out from Bobby and go back to uh to roger all right so i kind of had an idea for this uh for how we approach this but 
why don't, I'm going to let you talk first, Troy. Let me let me hear this this plan that you have. Uh, do, do you want to do this in character? Do you want to just talk it out? <sighs> Let's talk it out right a little now? bit, and, you uh, know, because my idea is basically uh, – it's changed a little bit because originally I was thinking in the last eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it has because like I was thinking using this guy. It's all based around the idea that I believe that Vicky can walk into the hospital and not be recognized because her face is different than the face that is on TV. Um, now it's possible that we're seeing something that's different from what the world is seeing, but it's a risk that. I'm willing to do. <laughs> so what I was going to do is have Vicky bring this injured guy in the trunk in as a distraction while Roger mm. comes in, gets a lab coat and pretends to be a doctor, finds Bobby and smuggles him out of there. And Neil drives the getaway car. Sweet. Um, but I'm thinking that this guy could prove to be two could one could be dead and two could be uh it could cause a problem when he starts describing <laughs> the man that pistol whipped him. <laughs> <laughs> that man is now uh blonde and wearing a hawaiian shirt and <laughs> will soon be a doctor <laughs> okay congratulations uh, all right i like it i like it this, that's great that's great all right so uh th th that to me is a good starting point so here was my idea for today I did not want to do 30 minutes of planning uh, for this for this mission, which is what any normal what would happen in any normal real world situation. But <laughs> uh, we're, do, we're doing a show here and we're playing a game and somebody already thought of this and took care of it. And it's a game called Blades in the Dark. And it is uh, written by John Harper and John <laughs> Harper writes specifically in his book. The reason I wrote this game is because people spent 35, 40 minutes, an hour planning an incursion into something for all, all for events that never take place. And they plan <laughs> for things that never happen. And then when things happen that they didn't plan for, it's just like, oh, what the God? And then everything is all out of whack. And now we've wasted a whole bunch of time. So uh, I want to pursue this in a Blades in the Dark style. I'm going to include some Blades in the Dark mechanics that I've cool. kind of morphed into Delta Green, which should be really fun. Uh, and the main thing that you have to start off with is a, uh, a an approach and an engagement role. And so the approach is what's the plan? What's the detail? What's the, what's the first thing? I think you've already done that. Troy kind of nailed it. So the, the initial plan, you know, we can call it deception is probably the way that you're going to go about this, but it is Assuming Vicky would not be recognized, send Vicky in with the injured man as an actual patient that needs help in the ER. And then Roger is going to use that distraction to sneak in. Bobby is, or uh, 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 Neil is going to stay in the car as, as a getaway driver. Does this uh, all sound good to everybody? Yeah. I love yeah, this all right. I would I also can't like drive, to. That's good. <laughs> oh, you yeah. can't drive. He's a New Yorker. <laughs> I'm a New Yorker. Fuck. No, He's I can born drive. Raised New York. Oh, okay. Um, I want to also check because, like, Vicky didn't change her hair or anything because Roger used all the hair dye. Um, <laughs> <laughs> even though he originally told Sorry, Vicky, there's none left. <laughs> he told Vicky to change her hair. He, Roger dyed his full body to just make sure <laughs> that it was real. Hair. Hair. His chest hair, all is of his blonde. body hair, <laughs> um, so that it would stand I, up under further examination. That's right. It's like, well, this guy has a blonde Sasquatch. He's surely <laughs> <can't> <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like to check just in this guy's car um, if there's like a baseball cap that she could just like tuck her hair into, put the baseball cap on when she goes into this hospital. Um, and what I team? think Roger tells her the what? No, what team? What team ha the hat is? It's important. Oh, it's be the Orioles. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Roger. I mean, it's probably a it. it's probably a Patriots hat. <sighs> Okay, great. Uh, let's get started. Let's. Get I don't wear the hat. I don't wear it. Is it a I, Patriots hat? I throw I, it out the window. I have one thing that I want to say, and I'm going to try and do it delicately. If this guy is still alive, I think he is going to recognize me. I think that maybe you can say you saw him. This is a game we're playing here, and I think this is Roger's idea. Is like you saw him jumped by a group of minorities. <laughs> and the reason is just like, it's Boston. It's Let's bad. throw him off the scent of Roger because he's going to be like, this big guy got me. And they'll buy but it. Vicky is going to say that if you feel comfortable 
role play <laughs> The doctor's gonna be like, oh that's, god, those doctors got him. That's what I don't think. That's what I don't think. I also don't think it's really necessary. I mean, with your plan, yeah. I don't see any reason why this guy ever would have to see Roger again. Yeah, like if right. I take him out of the trunk and like he's on, I mean, I'm assuming he's unconscious. Well, look, you're assuming things. Let's not assume yeah. the plan, yeah. okay? okay? But if the idea is you're going to get him out of the trunk and take him into the hospital. He keeps what, saying what this Roger giant for? ripped dude beat him up, but I saw it was not. It was. It yeah, is. but it doesn't matter well, if they play that. I don't know who, who that is. You know, I think it's a bunch of minors. It was, I think it's <laughs> a bunch of, a bunch of school just, children. We were like yeah. 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 By a no. group of minors. A Have you ever seen a group of small, small potatoes? Teach children, <laughs> little um, guys with pickaxes and <laughs> lights on their helmets. Scarecrows. It was one said his name was scary. Sleepy. Um, <laughs> I think what Vicky is going to say, so you know, Roger, is that she doesn't. She doesn't know what happened. She found this guy in an alley and brought him to the hospital. Yeah, in like his she, car. In his car. Yeah. No, no. I'm, not saying. I'm just kidding. It doesn't matter. I'm not saying. Uh, okay, let's. The take, less lying Vicky has to do, the better. Because she's a wallet. cop. She, she, well, she's not a cop. She's a federal agent, but she, I, I shouldn't make up like more lies that I have to yeah. then co- yeah, corroborate. I'm, I'm, com- I'm complicating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, like, you're complicating things it. unnecessarily. Let's, and let's cops get are into it. And, lying, so and don't, here's, don't force here. I was just hoping we'd get one racist <laughs> nurse <laughs> yes, that would be like, Boston. oh yeah, we see this Come all on, the time. It's Boston. It's Boston. In 2015, it's racist Okay, here's what we do. Like I said, we'll do this like Blades in the Dark, which means you are going to have an opportunity when things are thrown at you. You will have the opportunity and the resources to bip and bop more than you would in traditional in a traditional Delta Green encounter because this is not going to be a traditional Delta Green encounter uh, simply because I'm not giving you any time to prep. So um, you are going to utilize your willpower points. You have willpower points, which are a resource that represents your mental and emotional fortitude. This is something that comes up from time to time in our game. We haven't used too, too much of it. But generally speaking, everybody has between 11 and 15 willpower points, and they're based on your power score. You can utilize those willpower points. You can spend them to try to drive narrative choices. You, you could call them flashbacks if you want. You could also reset something that's happening in the world that I've already said for a certain amount of willpower points. Generally speaking, anything that is going to, for that to happen is going to cost between three and five willpower points. Otherwise, you're going to have to make die rolls. There's another mechanic which you'll be allowed to use, which is you will be allowed to spend one willpower point to gain 10% on any skill check that you need to make, and you could spend more than one at a time. So if you wanted to spend three or four willpower points, you could really give yourself a chance to pass a check if you really need to pass it. Once you get down to two willpower points, you begin to have a nervous breakdown and you essentially become, you you essentially will flee the scene. Uh, If you get to zero willpower points, you will fall unconscious and be uh, incapacitated. So manage this appropriately, as appropriately as you can. Um, So to start off, Vicky, if you'd like, you can spend a willpower point, and there'll be a hat in the car. Oh, damn. That's so mean. <laughs> this dude was a, just like, a clean cut young businessman on his way to work. There is no rational reason this baseball cap would be in his car. If you want to spend a willpower point for it to have it, you can do so. Yes. I want to. Damn. All right, what's the hat? Uh, I think it is a. It's a Patriots hat. I think he's a At big Tom point. Brady guy. <laughs> It's just um, a, tw- a TB12 hat. Yeah, I, you know what? No, it's like a cool. It's like a really cool, worn, vintage Patriots hat. You know, it's like a worn brim, and it's got sun fading. Uh, and Vicky Pat the just Patriot looks. Patriot on it. Oh, yeah. yeah, in the three point yeah. stance. Vicky just looks yeah. like a real football head. She so it's really a throwback is- Patriots hat, and it is. Uh, and hey. It's football season. We're in like week two right now. That's true. Of football season. So what year is this again? It's uh, 2015. 2015. So they oh. were. Oh yeah. I mean, at the top oh, of their God, game, basically. Yeah. I was gonna bring up the uh, <laughs> still ball. The deflate. It'd be funny if he had an Aaron Hernandez game. jersey in his car. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you could just wear that in the trunk. That would be no. Very hey, what's up? 
<laughs> Go Very <hats>. appropriate. <laughs> He's my favorite patriot. <laughs> Got a t-shirt. Free Hernandez. That man yeah. can do nothing wrong. It's 2015. <laughs> He'd have um, to embrace the irony as he lay in the trunk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not for real. Uh, yeah, so she, I spent a point. So I got a full night's rest last night. Um, so it's it's okay. I can do it. Um, but I'll spend the point. And she basically like tucks her hair. P- girls do the thing where they like put it in a bun through the, the snapback part. So mm-hmm. her hair's like pulled up and she's got the hat on. So you can't really like see her hair color. Um, and... Okay, great. Uh, I am going to do an engagement roll. Well, actually, no, one of you, one of you will. It's just going to be a luck roll because uh, DG uses the luck uh, luck mechanics for things that are completely out of the agent's control that have nothing to do with your impact on the world. And so um, the engagement roll will open with one of you guys rolling a luck roll and we'll split it up into thirds. So if you roll a zero or a one to a 33, we'll say... Uh, that's going to be your most controlled position. If you roll a 34 to 66, things will be uh, a little unstable. And if you roll higher than 67 to 100, you're going to start off with a bad situation to have to work your way out of. So um, open it up. Who, who wants to roll it? How about uh, how about Bobby rolls it since he's not there? Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. I, was, I thought I was still unconscious for this. Right. Right. Just a basic luck roll. Basic luck. Okay. So, oh shit! Okay, come on, baby. Ooh, sixty-seven. Oh, oh the my worst god! Right. Exactly the worst scenario. Desperate. It's a desperate situation. <laughs> it's a desperate. It opens up with a desperate situation. Okay. Okay. All right. This just means it's gonna be more interesting. All Ooh. right. So here's how it opens. Oh, we open up wrong. with the car pulling up near the emergency room, but not in the front driveway of the emergency room. Immediately, the first thing that you see are two cop cars that are parked nearby, lights not flashing, but there are two police officers that are just kind of like milling about, talking with a couple of journalists that are standing outside. (laughs) So there's two news vans as well, and there's a couple cameramen, and they're just talking. It doesn't seem like they're shooting anything right now. They're just talking to each other, kind of looking up at the hospital, speaking with each other. Vicky gets out, baseball cap, confident that she's not being seen by any of them. You open the trunk, and the guy is completely unconscious, and it is filling with blood. Uh, oh, Jesus. Okay. What do, you, what do you do? I pull him out. I lift him out. N- okay. Give me a strength check. Okay. It's he's, doable. He's completely limp. Okay. 186-pound um, body. That's okay, so strength like a uh, strength uh, times five. Strength times five. Okay. Ooh. Oh, what? Just what is my strength times five? No, roll it, and you got to roll oh. under your strength times five. Ah, uh, twenty-two Ooh. under oh. fifty-five. Yeah, wow! Baby. So Vicky just like pulls from some reserves within it's, herself. It's like gets your, you get it, your hands under his arms, over the roof <laughs> pull him up <laughs> as his head lolls back onto your shirt, your blue dress. It blood just like gets onto your dress immediately up in your chest area, and just you start dragging him out of the just trunk. Just got this imaginary dress. I just got this dress. Roger, what are you doing? Roger's like, y'all good? And he walks towards the hospital. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I uh, Roger, you you're gonna get out of the car and walk. Yeah, I'm gonna. It, it's she's about got that noon, under control. One p.m. It's the sun is shining, and there is not really much between you and all these police officers but they are not looking your way right now yeah roger's got blonde hair uh hawaiian shirt khaki slacks uh he looks he looks very different but he is big um so roger kind of wants to go around to the back of the hospital uh away from where these cop cars are or like a different a a different entrance give me a stealth uh 28 under 77 you start moving around toward the back of the hospital. Nobody takes any notice of you. Okay. Neil, you're just staying put in the car for now. Yeah, Neil, he digs into his medical bag and he has a CD. Okay. And he puts the CD into a CD player in the car in 2015. Whatever, what is it? A Hyundai? Acura. 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 It's equipped. And turns it up, 
and he just starts playing Glenn Fry's "You Belong to the City" <laughs> on repeat over and over again. You belong to the city. <laughs> <laughs> you belong, belong to, to the night. night. <laughs> and that's his plan until <laughs> we have to go. <laughs> Okay, you start listening to this music, and uh, Vicky, <laughs> you start pulling this body out of the car. It is getting so heavy. Now he's fully out. His legs are loose on the ground, and it's it's actually very difficult to, to move him. Do you want to try to drag him across this little uh, street that you're on to get into the parking lot area of the ER? Yeah, I think I need to get him at least away from the car. I don't want, like, a trail you know, directly back. So I think I need to like quickly like drag, 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 drag at least to the parking lot. And then her plan is to maybe like call for help, help. you know, see if there's an EMT and okay. just say, help me, help me. Okay. Uh, give me a strength times five. Okay. Help me. Seven Eskimos just <laughs> beat this man to death. No. no. <laughs> Where? Aaron Hernandez just kicked the shit out of this Aaron guy. Aaron Hernandez himself. Aaron Hernandez That's beat what started this man. It. Uh, you're Back distracting me. Escobar. I'm rolling bad now because you're distracting me with your horrible racism. Uh, 75 Boston. over 55. You start to pull him across this street and he slips from your grasp and his head slams on the street and his body is just lying there and you hear a sickening sound as his skull hits the street. Oh, he's now And he's laying there unconscious. Oh, fuck. Uh, what do you do? I, he's I think fine. she goes, Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Uh, and then she grabs him by the legs. Or, or no, but under the armpits. Under the armpits. <laughs> I was gonna say, and oh. she just like waddles backward and, and drags him. So she's not carrying him anymore. She's just dragging him as fast as she can to get him into the parking lot. Okay. Give me a strength another, times five. Another, plus 20%. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you're not carrying his full weight. Okay. That's um 51. Uh, and it would be under. 70. 70. Yeah. Okay, so you start dragging him over and you attract the notice of two of these police officers that happen to be standing in the parking lot area. And she's they like, look help, over. Help! Help me! And they start hustling over to you. Okay. Roger, where are you? You've, got, you've gone around kind of the side of the hospital. You see it's just more parking lot. There's, you know, no entrances, just kind of windows and brick as you're walking around. Roger is just alertness on high for like any way of getting into the building uh, that is just like casual and normal, but not walking directly by cops. And that my goal when I get inside is to uh, kind of act like I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be at all times and get to a place where I can grab a doctor's coat with hopefully with a badge. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, give, me an give me an intelligence roll. That's not my strong suit. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, oh, dude. My intelligence is an eight times five is 40, and I rolled a 40. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Nice. Yeah, I did. 40, shit. 4 0. Nice. Wow. Holy shit. Awesome. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps uh, you have spent some time in some hospitals or sent enough people to enough hospitals that you would uh, think your best chance of getting the clothing that you need to get through something like this would probably be in the lower basements of a hospital in their laundry. Hospitals have pretty extensive laundry areas. They have to do a lot, a lot of washing all the time. And perhaps there is an entrance or a way to get down there, but you haven't seen anything yet as you're walking around. Uh, in your continued scoping of the area, you do notice a um, you do notice a main entrance. Uh, to the hospital that is not the emergency room entrance and you see people going in and out but no police officers you do see a journalist van there as well though and what looks like a reporter speaking with a cameraman and perhaps an editor or producer uh, outside the van near the entrance to the hospital they're not actively shooting and then uh, but there's still more to be seen but th th here you're seeing the main entrance that is not the ER entrance okay uh, Roger's going to just walk in there. Um, he'll pull out his cell phone and pretend he's having a, a conversation as he does okay. so. Yes, I know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, he's laughing. He's having a good time. Clearly not a suspect. <laughs> yes. Has he ever laughed in his Clearly life? Clearly not a suspect. <laughs> That's how he laughs. 
<laughs> oh, so you're acting like Tom Cruise uh, having a drink with friends in Top Gun? <laughs> <laughs> the most unnatural you've ever seen Tom Cruise in his life? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. And yeah, he just walks in. His, his, whole, his whole vibe is like, act like he's been there before. He's infiltrated. Okay. Give me a stealth roll and give yourself a plus 20% because of your current disguise. We're looking at this journalist turns and watches as you begin walking in the hospital. You have no doubt there's no one that knows more clearly the faces that were on that news broadcast than every journalist that's in this area right now. And so they're looking out for anything that that could uh, tip them off in that area. Do I add the 20% to my roll or to my score? Uh, You add it to your score. To your score. Okay, yeah. So thank, thankfully, with that, I made it 86 under 97. Wow. Ooh, 97? Wow. Oh, my God. 86. Yeah, my stealth is 77. So with oh 20%, God. Raj will be just wow. fine. Wow, well, you are in a really good place right now. To, oh, to, he's the to only guy us. that would possibly be able to pull this off. Yeah, really? Yeah. Uh, okay, we see you walking in the main entrance. A journalist looks a sidelong glance at you and then seems to turn right back around <laughs> and start chatting with their people. And we see Roger disappear into the main entrance of the hospital. Vicky, these cops run up to you. Uh, wh- wh- what happened? What, what happened? I found this guy. I found this guy. I think he got hit by a car or, or, or beat up or Eskimos. something. Where? Where did you find him? He was... um. <laughs> He was in an alleyway. Um, it was. Where? It was. Um, it was in downtown. It was like Back Bay. Um, I, I took him here. Uh, I didn't know where. To, I didn't know where to take him. You, you, Jesus Christ! You didn't call nine one one. You 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 pulled him up from where he was. Yeah, I, I didn't. I I'm a I'm I'm a federal agent. I'm a federal agent. I I just threw him in. I should I not? I I I'm sorry. I you're a federal agent. What? Please, my yeah, can I see your ID, please, ma'am? Why would you say, <laughs> you say, you say, you you say who you really are? Did you not know the plan? Did yeah. you not know the actual plan here? I'm a federal yeah. agent. Turn to like, steal a guy out of the hospital. I forgot they know. I forgot they know my name. Um, I, can I? Can I recognize? Oh, that's so crazy! The same federal agent found both <laughs> this guy and the guy from a bored housewife. <laughs> that saw a guy attacked by Eskimos. Can I retcon? Can I retcon? You can spend willpower to retcon. Yeah, oh, I'll spend one. Four yeah. <laughs> just take that off my shoes. Yeah, just, you can, around. I was so bored. Yeah, just so take that off. Um, you spend can. three willpower points oh. to not say what you just said. Two. Three. <laughs> can, I spend, can I spend one? Three. No, no, no. I'm not done. Can I spend one of my bottle caps? Oh, oh, there you go. She does the most precious of all <laughs> Delta players. Green forces. bottle cap. I have two. I have nice. two, actually. God oh, damn it. Sydney. Nice. So what you get for giving that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> well, she earned it. She earned it. All right. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. That's fine. Bottle cap. Um, all right. People so tuning in the, are like, what game are they <laughs> playing? It's one of the key games right now. <laughs> We've Roger incorporated so four fast. different systems. Vicky, Vicky wasn't listening. Roger walked away so fast. Um, okay, so Vicky says, I um, I just found him. I didn't know what to do. I, I, I've never seen a dead body. Do you think he's dead? All right, all right. Just stay calm, stay calm. Can we get some help over here? Some oh help God, over here. Oh, God, is he dead? And they start calling toward. <laughs> is he uh, dead? <laughs> and she, Vicky starts like, Full on, maybe start- somewhat actually freaking out because she's having like a mental <laughs> crisis right now because she almost said she was a federal agent. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. So I'm maybe f- some real tears yeah. are coming out. Uh, so a guy come, a couple of guys come running out from the uh, a couple of EMTs that you saw a parked ambulance. They were standing outside, so they come running over. One stops, yells at the other one. They run back. They grab like a gurney. They run it over and they start. Asking you like, wh- where did you find him? What was uh, what, what what injuries does he have? Do you know? Do you, did you see what happened to him? And they start like going over his body, examining his body. They're like gently touching behind his head. He f- comes away, hand all red with blood. He starts working his way down the arms. Uh, you know, look, uh, unbuttoning his shirt, like looking for for wounds and injuries. Did you see what happened to him? No, no, I, I think, I think, I think he might have gotten. Maybe he fell or, or got beat up or, or, or somebody hit him. Maybe somebody hit him with the car. I'm, 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 uh, 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 uh. And she starts like touching the blood on her dress, and she's like, "He's 
He's bleeding. He's bleeding so much. It's all right, ma'am. It's all right. We're going to take care of him. We're going to take care of him. It's all right. Okay, let's get him up and get him into blah, 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 blah. And they start like talking to each other about what they have to do. Looks like we got a head wound, uh, per- perhaps a blunt force trauma to the skull, uh, perhaps a fracture, blah, blah, blah. They start moving him off. The police officers are like, please come with us, ma'am. And they start uh, ushering you over to their car. Okay, and she's she's still like, should I go with them? Should I go with them? Like uh, pointing to the body. That won't be necessary, ma'am. We'd like to take down your information, find out where you found this gentleman, so that we can find out whoever did this, if it was indeed uh, a crime, uh, if there was a crime that was committed here. So, uh, could you please uh, first, what is your name? And Vicky is going to say the name of her old therapist, Sarah, because it's the first name that comes to her mind and she's she just says uh it's sarah i don't know if i ever said her last name um but jessica she's like parker Sarah? <laughs> Your AA sponsor was Sarah Jessica Park. Yes. Sarah Jessica. <laughs> that would be amazing if we never said her name like through all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? So she, does, she says Sarah Jessica Park, no relation. No relation. No relation. No relation. <laughs> no relation. <laughs> Are you serious? Your name's Sarah Jessica Park? <laughs> <laughs> the other guy's like, Jimmy. He's like, sorry, sorry. Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> Jimmy. And, that's and, actually and, a great and way to kind of like deflect things. Yeah, that's great uh, though. She's, uh, <laughs> where did we act? Where were we? Um, outside, outside Aaron Hernandez. Outside Aaron Hernandez's house. <laughs> <laughs> outside of Aaron Hernandez's house. That's outside Aaron Hernandez's, Hernandez's igloo. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God, you're never going to believe it. The strutting tight end and a band of Eskimos brutally beat this man outside of an igloo in Jamaica Plains. I'm telling you, this story's airtight. Were we, were we in Copley? Because we were at your Airbnb. Where was your Airbnb? Um, my Airbnb was on, Ma- I think it's on Mass Ave. Um, so you found him... Back Bay? I, I mean, mean did you that... drag him all the way from Mass Why Ave? the hell did you drive all the way down here? <laughs> it way has down. to be, I have to pick a neighborhood close to where we are. So, cause yeah, we're at um, we? Kearney. Kearney Hospital. And I don't, I don't, I don't know, know where, where that is. That is. Well, you uh, found you where you found Bobby was uh, Codman Square, and then that's in the Dorchester neighborhood. Okay, you're so in, Dorchester in Dorchester right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let me look at a it map was, here. Um, you found him near uh, near Dorchester. near the Ashmont train stop. Okay, yeah. There you go. It, in the in the Ashmont train stop in the near the Ashmont train. Wait, you just get that idea for free? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think of that shit. <laughs> Flashback. 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 There you go. Roger tells me. <laughs> that's where we are. Perfect. Two will PowerPoints. <laughs> <laughs> like he's gonna, I just want to see her have a nervous break. <laughs> I know. We're working toward it. Okay. Nine. Right. I'm not nine. Okay. Down to nine. Uh, they're they're nodding. They're writing this down. Makes sense. And uh, in what state did you find? Did you, did you see anyone running from the scene? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. <laughs> 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 Massachusetts. Been Alaska. Now that I think about it. <laughs> She immediately, she immediately says, I'm going to mute all three of you. <laughs> you are ruining Massachusetts, but that's not important scene right now. Uh, if you guys say an igloo one more time, I'm going to freak out. If you say Aaron Hernandez one more time. Sorry, sorry. Vinny says, <laughs> No, no, I just saw him and I was driving by and I just saw him. I thought maybe it was, you know, like a homeless guy or something. And then I, I was going to give him a dollar. I was going to just give him my lunch or something. And then, it, and then, and then he's going to blood and I picked him up. Okay. All right. All right. You did good. You did good. And he doesn't look like he's homeless or something. He's got nice clothes on. So you think somebody like, do you think he's dead? The other guy's looking at you and he's like, and why didn't you just call 911? Yo, I lost my phone. You don't have a phone? No. <laughs> my boyfriend broke. 
Oh, cash. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> they look at each other. It's like, what in the <laughs> I would make you roll persuade rolls, except like, it's, it's not so necessary. True. You're it's just acting true. hysterical. Yeah, it's true. Which, it's so which true. is like completely reasonable in, in this situation. Uh, and so they're just like, okay. Uh, <laughs> I have a water. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, get, get her a water. Get her a water. Uh, yes, we're going to get you a water and we'll get you out of here in a minute. Can I just see your identification, please? I don't have it because I lost my wallet. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm going to have to see your identification. What do you mean? You, lo you lost your wallet and your phone is broke? What happened to you <laughs> on the way? She's having a shitty day. <laughs> She's having a shitty day. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm sorry. If you don't have an identification, we're going to have to detain you. So do you, do you have an identification or not? Uh, no. <laughs> she says, she says, no. Um, she says, I can call my boyfriend. And then she said, but well, my phone's broken. <laughs> uh, so she said, I could call him and and maybe he could bring it, but I, somewhere in the okay. apartment, it's, I haven't been able to find it in a week. <laughs> 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 and then she says, I was driving, but I have a license. I just can't find it. Okay, all right, all right, ma'am, please. <laughs> she was please. trying to do good here. Have, have a seat. Have a seat here. Just uh, You can sit in the car if you like, or you can sit on the curb, whatever you're more comfortable with. you want to sit down here, or do you want to sit in the car? She's going to just... Warm sit on the curb and she's like reaching her hand up for the water all right we'll get your phone we'll get your phone to call your boyfriend uh in the meantime uh, here drink some water and then we'll go back to Rod. <laughs> <laughs> well here's the thing i knew that they were going to eventually ask me for my id yeah no this rocks that's solid. why i said my name but then like it doesn't matter they're going to find out who i am regardless yeah. but well, mm -hmm. I'm and the that hysteria bridge. that's like oh, that's perfect like the, the cops are gonna be like all right forget it. she's she's fine She's I think annoyed. she deserves a, another annoyed. bottle cap. Yeah. <laughs> this is an amazing performance. I'm getting, I'm like, I'm getting lo loss of breath. I'm like I'm actually hyperventilating. Exactly. <laughs> hyperventilating. Uh, all right. So um, let's go back to Roger. He's got a surgeon in a rear naked choke. <laughs> 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 In surgery. In surgery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like four nurses in the room just like <laughs> screaming <laughs> tools flying everywhere to get all club? the way to the op to general surgery <laughs> from the front door uh, <laughs> um, alright so Roger's in and he is looking for uh an elevator or stairs even that go down. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in the main entrance, you see that there's kind of like a, a sitting and a waiting area. There's like a small coffee bar, coffee cart thing. There's a reception. Uh, and then there is a security door, a double door that goes back into the hospital. You'll have to be cleared through reception for that. And you see another side door uh, that seems to be being used by uh like utility personnel. So like, let's say you saw like a, a janitor walk out of there or something like that. Uh, also key card uh, encoded. You don't see any other stairs and everything seems to be pretty locked down. Also uh, by the front desk are two uniformed guards, just hospital security guards. They do not look like Boston police officers. Okay. Um, it seems like the utility closet is my best option here. I want to see if I can uh, if a guy is coming out. Yeah, you just saw a janitor walk out from there with like uh, a, a, a garbage can, pulling like a, a big garbage can with some cleaning utilities in it and he's emptying a trash can out of the lobby into it. Alright. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to do the ooh, bump into him and then grab his uh, badge type thing. Um 
let's just go with that. First idea, best idea. Uh, so he's going to be like distracted on the phone and he's going to try and be, bump in. Oh, I'm so sorry. And stealthily grab the thing. Okay. This card. Um, oh, for God's sakes. Uh, is there like a, is there a sleight of hand? I can't remember. <laughs> stealth, but stealth, stealth is a completely different skill, like uh. sneaking around versus pulling a. Um, um, so I guess maybe I might, you, might be one of those crafts. Could be dexterity. Yeah, yeah times dexterity. five. Kind of, when in doubt, I'll rely on dex times there five. There really should be like more crime commission specific <laughs> yeah, skills. Yeah, because that's what it always devolves into, into. Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. This guy yeah, dodge, let's try firearms. Let's now. do it. Uh, all right, so this is a dex times five roll. Um, you know, remember you can spend things to increase your odds on this as needed. Uh, seems like a pretty important roll. I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> yeah, I'll spend a, a willpower to bump it up ten percent. Okay, so what are you rolling on? What are you trying to I'm roll? Trying on? to roll under seventy. Okay. Um, and uh, he's going to help the guy pick. Oh, I'm so sorry. And help him pick everything up uh, uh. as he tries to steal it. Ten. Ooh, Ten. Damn. Okay, Ooh. down one willpower point, but you have Got this it. card in your hand. He doesn't seem to notice at all. So, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Here's your, here's your trash. Um, <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> handing it to me. And then uh, he will wait for a, uh, I guess, using alertness. If you want me to roll, I can. He's got pretty great alertness. Look for that moment when no one is just watching him. This end. would be stealth. This be self, uh, and he wants to just key into that utility entrance, you know. Okay. Uh, and I failed. Oh. Okay. Nine, Ninety-four so, over seventy-seven. Fuck. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you boop boop slide up the key into the utility entrance. You open it, and just as the door is pulling closed behind you, you hear, "Yo, yo, buddy." And then the door closes, and we're going to take a break. Oh, and we're going to oh. see what happens in the seconds after this. <laughs> Just hold on a minute. We'll be right back. Fade back in, and we cut to Bobby. Bobby, oh, working over this detailed uh, code break <laughs> as he's trying to figure out what are the next steps. He realizes this four, four kept lingering in his head, and then Roger, and then you remember it, Bobby. You hear it kind of clearly in your mind as suddenly. Uh, you're reminded of a, a voice, a voice you hear that sounds like maybe it's talking into a, a walkie talkie or something like that. You hear the crackle of another voice coming back through it, her responding. And then the voice saying clearly, we're on the fourth floor, room 29. And you see four and 29 is appearing in this code. And for some reason, when you rolled this most recent SIG in, you're putting together four and 29. And while you can't explain it, you know there's this instinct that comes to you that you need to tell whatever that thing is, that soldier that looks like Roger Cumstone, you need to tell him this information. You need to say, I'm on the fourth floor in room 29. You can't explain why, but you have this extreme urge to do that even before you report the rest of this stuff to the colonel. 
So I'm alone in this room, right? The, the Labalas is in there. He's just like okay. drinking like a shittily made coffee. Right uh, okay. He's just like sitting in the corner, like drinking out of a beat up tin cup. It's like, um, private. What? Private. I need you. Did you figure something out? Uh, yes. I need to find. I need to what find that other private we were with when we took that um, that uh, group. Private Hernandez. <laughs> no, he was, he was <laughs> the other one. Private, private Brady? Uh, private, uh, private, I think his private name Parker. was... Uh, Pri- private Parker? I think his name was Messiah or... Because <laughs> Bobby doesn't know Roger's... Does Bobby know Roger's real name at this point? Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah. I've given yeah. up yeah. on it. I yeah. think he everybody knows. No. Yeah, yeah everyone said it. Yeah. Comstone. Private's name is Comstone. Comstone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, his, that's real name. Comstone. his real What's name. His real name. <laughs> his real name. Wow. Why? Why do you need to talk to him? I just need you to see get this, like fear comes over his face. I just need to get this information to him. I need to. I need to tell him. There's, this there's something wrong with that boy. Yes. From yes. The I, time that I got here, I saw it in his eyes. There's something wrong with him. I know. He's uh, he's he's extremely large and strange. Well, I think he's across the street. Okay. He's in, he's he's holding the west side or the west building. All right. Bobby gets up, heads heads down to. I, I gotta go. I Wait, gotta go. are you done? Are you not done? And we hear him calling as you start running down the I'm stairs, and, and the the radio keeps crackling, and we hear it fade out as you run out of that building. You run out of the building, and for the first time, what has been this like hazy, overcast sort of vibe in the city, also constantly populated with like the smoke of of artillery and. Uh, and gunfire and you know explosions and all that for hours and hours and hours as you've been working on this thing there's been no shots fired there has been a relative calm and as you come out it seems that the clouds have started to move and as you go to cross the street to where he is you look up and you see two suns in the sky Bright, shining down upon you. You're in Tatooine. <laughs> what is that? You're on Tatooine. <laughs> it's otherworldly. You already knew you were in a place you didn't understand, but now you're looking up, and there's not one sun, but two. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. We Bob. cut back to Roger. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Roger is has just closed into this, uh, or and you hear the voice behind you. Yo, hey, hey, buddy, hey. And the door closes behind you. You see a hallway in front of you, white with white tile floor, completely plain. It extends about thirty feet. What do you do? Uh, no doorways or anything. Or I... it, it it seems to open into like a hallway on the on the end, yeah. of like a T intersection. So Roger was just like walking through, like he didn't even hear that guy with all you know, and also like hopes that he doesn't have a card. He has the guy's card right there, so it's he has a moment. Once that door closes, is there? Can you see through, or is it a solid door? Yeah. It is. It has like a window, like a, window. a, a long rectangular window with like um, wire, wires, wi- wires yeah, within the glass. I figured it would have that. Um, all right, because I don't want to break so, into a sprint. So you're here. just walking. I don't. I don't want to break into a sprint, but I am walking with haste, looking for a staircase down. And now I've switched. Roger is like uh, going to like a plan B or a plan A two here, where he's looking for um, surgical scrubs so that he can cover his face as well. Now. Um, okay, so that's what you I'm begin. For. You're trying to like walk naturally down this hallway, perhaps with your alertness. You kind of like scan back behind you, or maybe you act. What, do you look? Around, you, do you turn around or not? Uh, no, I just keep walking. All right, you hear boom uh, uh, up against the door, and then just as you get to the end of the corridor, you hear beep beep of an ID, and then click of the door opening 30 feet behind you. As you step into this area, it opens up a little bit, and all that is there on the right side is a utility elevator, like a rather large elevator to your right, and to your left, a big red exit sign and a stairwell. So this looks like utility stairs, but then there's also an elevator that you could take up or down. One's on the right, the, the elevator on your right, the stairs on your left, you come to this end, which way do you go? I'm gonna go into the elevator, I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna go up one floor. Well, you turn to the elevator and hit the button? Yes. And then you hear the door close behind you, click, and then, yo, buddy! At the elevator. Hold on a second, and you hear tap, 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 of steps coming down, and then, ding! The elevator arrives just as a 
hospital security guard comes walking up and he's five feet away from you. Okay. Um, Roger will uh, go to take a step into the elevator and then reach out and grab the guy and boom, smash his face into the wall. <laughs> oh my God. All right, Roger goes to take a step. All of a sudden he whips around, grabs this guy and wham. All right, give me your, is it unarmed? Oh God. Uh, yeah, this would be unarmed. Unarmed combat? <laughs> yep. Damn. This Jesus is amazing. <laughs> this is great. This is uh, the best can hospital I spend willpower ever. after the fact? Or, yeah. yeah. All right, so then I succeeded with the fucking willpower. Oh. Uh, 60. Wait, wait, so you needed one willpower? I know, I gotta spend two. Yeah, I gotta okay. spend two. Damn. Okay. Um, from now on, let's spend him before the roll, but I get you. Uh, all right. So you yeah, wham, two, two. you hit this guy's head against the wall and he bah, he slumps down and uh, you see that he has got a taser on his belt, no gun, and uh, has apparently been knocked out by this move, at least for a couple seconds. He's just like out cold on the floor and the elevator is open. What do you do? Does the taser knock you out? I, it, it, no, like, not, uh, not usually. It, it, it can cause it can up up for a while. It can yeah. cause loss of consciousness, which is a complication. Oh, it's a complication when that happened. Yeah. Normally, um, you're like stunned for a bit. Yeah, your normally muscles you're, you're contract. just like yeah, your you muscles. can't like do anything, but you're you're conscious and in it, a lot of pain. Stops. If I learned anything from playing Siphon Filter, if you do it on him long enough, he'll catch fire. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's bad. <laughs> Amazing Siphon Filter. I love it. <laughs> um. All right, uh, Roger is going to remove the taser from the guy's belt, put it on his person, uh, like slip it into a, the back of his pants or something. Uh, okay. And then let's just, uh, he's going to, uh, fuck, is there like a closet? You can see there's basement level one, basement level two, basement level three, and then there's also all access to the upper floors. This seems like a behind what most patients see sort of orderly slash uh, maintenance service, service elevator. Uh, access to the hospital. Yeah, in order to stick with the plan, I, I still need to go down uh, to try and get some some scrubs. But now this guy, you know, now we've got a ticking clock here with this guy. Unless is he I, secure, unless is he I security? kill him. Uh, yeah, he still looked like general security, right? He's why hospital you, security, not why like a put police. put on his clothes yeah. instead of scrubs? Time up. Bound, Did he have an gagging. outfit on? Yeah, he had like a white button down with gray trim shirt and like gray pants, like very plain looking security with uh, a, a badge that was that's sewn into the shirt, basically, um, that uh, that says he's uh, Carney Hospital Security. Or maybe it says like Stewart Hospital System Security, something like that. Uh, is it Stewart or st something like that? It's the hospital system. Um, all right. Uh, Roger. <laughs> this guy is like 50 something overweight white dude and uh, you might fit in it <laughs> but it's uh, certainly not your body type. Yeah, yeah. No, I was going to say yeah. he's a better chance of fitting in a scrub which are you know, uh, like one yeah, size yeah. fits all. all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's my idea. Roger's going to tase him until he uh, like maybe pisses himself and then <laughs> he's gonna pull out a couple <laughs> bottles of those doers and pour it all over his mouth and leave it there so if somebody finds him they're gonna think he got drunk on the job that's, that's great oh my gosh that's great oh. that's fantastic why did you have to tase him and then just pour a scotch on his mouth leave the bottle and then hop in the elevator uh, oh my god that's so great <laughs> I, I mean you just hold it there until you see urine <laughs> oh my god. I mean, I'm gonna get a couple right. pops there so I'm an going close to his torture close to his and nuts then you you, you pour a couple of doers, which, by the way, I'm shocked you haven't drank. I can't believe those are yeah. on your person. He's got uh, so many nips. Talk about willpower. He's got so many nips from, from Roger. Talk about willpower, exactly. <laughs> All right, you pour it on the guy. You get in the elevator. Where are you going? Uh, let's go to basement three. Basement three, all the way to the bottom. Boop. Start at the elevator. bottom. Yep. Elevator starts to go down. Starts to go down. Basement two, it stops sits there for a moment and you know somebody's about to get on bing the door opens this uh 
older, maybe uh, late 30s uh, woman gets in. Uh, she appears Hispanic. She is, um, uh, she is like, she's pulling like a, uh, like one of those big cloth rolling tubs of laundry. And she, the door opens and she walks in and looks at you like curiously and just like says, hello, and just moves it over kind of to the side to fit in with you and then stands in there with you and then do doesn't make eye contact. Okay. Um, and the door closes behind both of you. She looks and sees that B3 is already hit, and then it begins to descend. Arch smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Just tased an old man. Just <laughs> <laughs> smashing his face into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you get down to B3, and <laughs> bing, the door opens. She walks out. She pulls this uh, laundry cart out, turns it, and starts walking. Roger steps out and bends down to tie his shoe so he can kind of assess things without making it look like he doesn't know where he's going. So he does the old fake shoe tie. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> all right, so I need scrubs. I, I still want the lab, co the, the lab coat to go over the scrubs, mask, and the hairnet thing. Like, I want to be completely covered. Um, I think it'll be, this will buy him plenty of time here. And so... I'm just, I'm looking for that. <laughs> but okay. fucking so you start rolls. moving through this hallway until eventually, yes, you find a laundry area. It is in the very, very, very bottom. And you see steam and heat as like all these machines are running. And you see multiple people everywhere. Uh, I think they're almost all women. And they're all running these, these machines. And you see uh, folded and stacked on carts are scrubs. And uh, you don't see any masks. Um, masks would not be here, and uh, but you see the hat things and the the scrubs. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, you don't see gloves. You don't see masks. Those are kind of more in the actual. We'll get, OR. We'll get there. And what about <coughs> the hats though? Or no? The hats are in there. Okay. Yeah, the hats and the and the scrubs. All right. You, so you you manage to find some, but some people definitely take notice of you and they look over. Excuse me, sir. And Roger's like, sorry. Hold on. He pulls out his phone. One second. How and many? Do you, two. Three, three. How many of these do you have? These, uh, these, these scrubs here, like that are clean and ready. Uh, well, this is all set to How go many? to the fourth so floor, sir. I'm sorry. What I need, I need two. I, I, what's, uh, I'm sorry, I need sir. At least Who are just, you? I need at least two right now, please. Where are you going? Thank you. With these? Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm down on B3, <laughs> and now, and he just walks out. With it. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. He just grabs a couple scrubs. And walks out. Let's go back to uh, Sydney. Let's go back to uh, Vicky crying on the sidewalk. <laughs> You've been drinking some water, and this police officer comes over and says, Hey, I know you're upset. Sorry. <laughs> but it's just, it's police procedure. We can't let you go without having your ID and having you make a statement about where this guy was found and everything. And if you don't have your ID, that's a problem. So do you think if you call your boyfriend, he can bring it down here? Can I, um, can I say something in like, um, the confidentiality? Um, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Um, me and my boyfriend are like, not too good. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, so if I call him, he might get mad. And she's like looking at him. Ah. Uh, okay. Because I uh, lose a lot of stuff, you know? Okay. I understand. I can make a statement. I, I can make a statement. I can write it down. Uh, Ma'am, I'm sorry. There's, there's nothing I can do without an ID. We'll have to call your boyfriend. We'll have to bring him downtown. But we're going to have to take you downtown. I, I'm really sorry. And he stands up and goes to like try to talk to the other officer, and the other officer is like blah blah blah, and they seem to be going back and forth. Okay, while they're talking, Vicky's going to walk away. Just <laughs> 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 sort of walk <laughs> All right. <laughs> she's going like she's sitting next to the car, so if they're talking, give me she's a stealth. Just, okay, yeah. Like, <laughs> this is amazing. Fine. <laughs> 
He's can gonna I add, walk can I use a away. point to add <laughs> to my stealth? Yeah, you can use multiple points to okay. add multiple to your stealth. Ooh, when do though. I go crazy? At what point? Remind me. Two. 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 Okay. Um, Nervous okay. breakdown at two. All right, I'm going to use two points <laughs> there's your, to add there's your 20%. <laughs> when do I go crazy? When do I go crazy? Now? When do, I go crazy? <laughs> do I go crazy now? Uh, I'm adding 20% to my stealth. So let's see. And there's a few points put into my stealth because I fail that a lot. <laughs> Uh, no. no, no, no! Oh, this Six, could have been so easy. Oh, Sixty over thirty-four. Oh, wow! Tell him your boyfriend's your stealth Aaron was fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> stealth is fourteen. You only okay? Should I add another? Can I add another point? No, no. I know I did it for crazy. Roger, but that was a mistake. He had already rolled. We're not doing it anymore. <laughs> I set the rules up. Top. You should have said your boyfriend's Tom Brady. And yeah. Been like, yeah, get yeah. out of here. He's the best. Get out, get out, out of here, <laughs> Giselle. <laughs> Don't worry uh, about it. All right, you, um, you, you get up. You start walking, and they don't say anything. And you get a good like <laughs> 20, 30 yards away. <laughs> and then one of the guys turns. He's like. Yo, she just fucking walked away, dude. She's right over there. The guy turns around. He's like, what the? Hey, ma'am, excuse me. Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> he starts running after you. Okay, now. We'll, cut back, uh, we'll cut back to Francis. Francis in the middle of the street. You stopped a moment by these sons, but then you move through into another room uh, or into another building. Uh, and I'm looking for uh, 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 anybody in the in the room or in the in the building uh, that can point me towards private. Yeah, I think in short order, you're able to navigate your way okay. to private comes. Private comes. And I recognize him, right? I realize. It's, yeah, it's, okay. he's younger. He looks yeah. younger. All right, uh, come stone, come stone. Listen to me. Listen he to me. Just like looks up. Well, you tell me what he does, Troy. Oh, it's this. This, this comes stone. Sure. Looks up, he's got a cigarette dangling from his mouth. Yeah. I need, I need you to listen to me. It's very important. Fourth floor, room 29. Say it, say it, say it back to me. What, what is that? What does it's, that mean? You, you have to trust me. It's a location that you need to know. Fourth floor, room 29. I don't understand. Why do I need to know this? I, it, it's, it's important to the mission. You have to know this for the mission. Okay, fourth floor, room 29. Say it. Fourth floor, room 29. And all of a sudden we cut to Roger and he's like in a set of scrubs and he hears in his own head, fourth floor, oh. room 29. Wow. Yes. Oh. Can't understand where it came from, but it was his own voice saying it to him. Fourth floor, room 29, as if there was no doubt that that's where Bobby is. Are we He's in an elevator? Okay. We're, we're, we'll, we'll stay with Roger. Present time. Oh. What do you do? All right, I'm already in the elevator. You're already in the Going elevator, and you're already in this this gear. You've gotten changed. Okay. Um, I don't have any type of. Well, actually, I've got the janitor's ID. It probably looks pretty similar to everyone else's ID. Um, I don't know. You tell me. I, if I just turn it backwards, so it just looks like I have something on. Do you think it's grossly different? Do you want to do a luck roll for that? Yes, it's an entirely different ID than like a surgeon would have. Yeah. Okay. Um, do I have a lab coat too, or just scrubs? the access isn't the same? Uh, lab coat and scrubs. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just going to get off and, uh, where uh, on the fourth floor. Okay. So you, you hit four mm -hmm. and it begins going up and it gets to one and it stops. Okay. What I wanted to do was go take another elevator. That's why I was like, I want to see if there's another elevator on this. There isn't another elevator, okay. but there are stairs. Do you want to do the elevator or do you want to do stairs? Yeah. What I didn't want to do is go past the scene of the crime. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. what you're currently doing. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go to crime. another, try and find another stairwell if there is one or whatever and take stairs up to, up to at least two or three. <laughs> Okay, so we see how Roger starts moving upstairs. You get to B2. 
You see B1 printed on this this kind of yellowish door in red. It's printed B1. You continue around, and you're using these utility stairs. And then you get up to the first floor, and you hear multiple voices in the hallway where you just were on the other side of that door. And you hear, you know, what happened here? Blah, 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 blah. And there's just multiple people dealing with this guy. Uh, you just kind of hear mixed voices, <laughs> but it's Scott's not clear. So exactly. drunk. <laughs> <laughs> just been fired. Lost I was, his job. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just hear a woman who's like, I was literally talking to him 10 minutes ago, and he was dead sober. <laughs> What the hell happened? <laughs> How did he get blind drunk and piss himself? And piss himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Elijah just keeps going. Fall against a wall. Um, no, like your little scene, like what you created, caused no delay whatsoever. Like as they're in there, you immediately hear walkie-talkies going off, and they're like, there's an unauthorized person in the hospital. There's an unauthorized person in the hospital because multiple people heard him yell and run toward you to go into this area. And so they definitely know that somebody is in here, and that is going to put the police on alert that are in the hospital or at the hospital keeping an eye out for Bobby. So um, as you, you you can assume this as Roger, that now you're in, you're pretty much in trouble. Yeah. Um, and what do you do? This is the first floor. All right. Uh, I want to go up. Fuck. I, I, I was, I had another plan, but I got to work with this. So I'm just going to go to the fourth floor. I'm just going to go. All right. So just keep going, keep going, keep going. We see him just ascending up the steps as we cut to Neil. Neil, you're just jamming. <laughs> you yeah. belong to the city. One <laughs> 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 bright in '80s glory. <laughs> oh, you got to go to the YouTube video and see the jokes. The skin visual humor is fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, we cut in on Neil, and Neil, you're sitting. What are you wearing right now? What are you wearing? Hmm. Um, I don't think you really had time to get changed. I mean, I still think you were in what you were wearing. Yeah, I think he's still wearing his kind of like alligator pattern leather jacket uh, and his like his shirt's bolo tie, but he's shaved head now. Nice. Yeah. yeah. You're sitting there in the... Are you in the driver's seat? Yeah. You're in the driver's seat of this car. You're sitting there with your, your alligator leather jacket on and... As you're listening to the music, you're kind of fading away and thinking about whatever kind of things Neil thinks about. (laughs) And you kind of mindlessly, your right hand drifts to your chest and then reaches into the interior pocket of your alligator leather jacket, your breast pocket, and you feel something in there. Feels like... uh, like a book, small journal or something like that. I ignore it completely and just keep listening. To <laughs> <laughs> Gently caressing. I want to listen to a song. <laughs> uh, no. well, you've listened to it multiple times. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, he just like sort of pulls it out, like takes a look. You slowly draw it out, and we see you're holding a small red book with the yellow sign emblazoned on the front of it. The same book you saw Barbas delivering through the small red door in his house. The same book that you know was being printed over and over and over again by the scribe. It is the play, The King in Yellow. And it's just in your pocket. You see the yellow sign. You've already been so corrupted by this that there really is no immediate impact upon seeing it, but do you do anything in the moment other than seeing it from the outside? And you know what this is. You know exactly what it is. Uh, I'm going to crack it open to the first page. (sighs) So like read, read the first scene. (laughs) <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really we Neil's see Neil slowly, glass. bald, shaved head, <laughs> Neil slowly opens, cracks the cover, and these like 
thin tissue-like paper pages. You pass over the copyright. And you see... Actually, what does the copyright page say? The copyright page says that it is printed in 1921 and, you know, has it like in Roman numeral years and all this stuff and gives uh, the name of a publishing company that I'm blanking on at the moment, but I'll... I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll remember it next week, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, something that you... I can't remember if you've heard of it or not based on your Night Floors investigation. You may have. But it's not something that jumps out to you immediately. Uh, and as you cross the next page, there's a title page. It's called The King in Yellow. No author listed. <laughs> as you go to turn toward the front page... Bam! Immediately, you're snapped out of it by a knocking on the window. <laughs> in the passenger side. Okay. Oh, the passenger side. Okay. Oh, so, like, looks sake. over, sees... Looks over, you see... a familiar car. Yeah, and you see a, a, a parking... Or, a, like, a parking officer, like a um, traffic police. And this woman leans down, and she's like, You can't park here! You can't park here! You gotta move! The hospital! And she points across, like, to the ER right across the way there. This is not a road you can park on. You got to move. And I lower the way. I, I look over. I tried to fiddle with the, the buttons on the driver's side, trying to find the passenger side window controls. And he lowers it down. He leans over towards it. like, no park here? <laughs> no, sir. You can't park here. You need to get off of this block and make your way to the hotel. Park. No park. Hospital, Off of this no block and uh, make your way to the hotel. You <laughs> have a reservation. Hos- hotel, hos- hotel, hospital. Yes. Hospital. Yes. No, not the hospital. Not the hospital. Sp- the hotel. Spa. Spa. No. So hotel. just just please keep it moving. Please keep it moving. You're going to have to find your bottle somewhere else. You're going to have to find your bottle somewhere else. Well. Oh. <laughs> uh. Scared. And you can see her. She Scared starts to like. Face. She starts to like blink, <laughs> like kind of oddly, yeah. and then like looks back down at you. Looks at your car again, sir. You got to keep moving. You got to keep moving. You can't park here. Okay. And uh, he starts the car, and he just starts very slowly rolling it forward, like, <laughs> like point five miles per hour. Point like almost in neutral, like slowly <laughs> <Yeah>. rolling <laughs> it forward. <laughs> Neil, perhaps you pick up on this in a way that uh, others may not. As soon as she began speaking with you, suddenly, like, it could be the presence of you, could be the presence of the book, but it immediately, it had an, an impact on her, just like being near you. And she began to say things that don't make any sense in, in her life or at all. And then she almost seemed to snap out of it for a second, maybe not even remember what she just said. And as you pull away, Neil, you start to realize you are having an impact on the world around you in a way that you never have before. We'll see how Neil feels about that in a second. Let's uh, let's go back to Roger. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. God, we got to go back to uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> you you are like some. What, what did I say? 30 yards, 40 yards away from these guys, like a good distance when they yeah. notice that you're, that you've walked away and they start running toward you. She, yeah, Vicky is sprinting away. Oh my oh God. She bolts? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Okay. And she, I mean, Vicky's not race. out of shape. She's a little older. She's in her forties, but she is a trained officer and she knows how to fucking move. What is she, she wearing on her feet? She's got like low heels on, which she always has on, but she's okay. running those in New York City, chase people okay. down, tackled them. So she is just like, <laughs> like sprinting, totally okay. not the damsel in distress anymore. Oh, All right, yeah. let's go. Bum, bum. Off and run, and Vicky starts taking off down this road. Dun, 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 dun. Give me uh, an athletics roll. Okay. Yes. This will be an opposed athletics roll. All right, I'm gonna use another point to add ten more. Oh, man. Athletics isn't bad, but yeah, little, little help can. Hurt. Oh baby, Ooh. ten under forty. Ooh. No, oh nice, nice. Ten under forty, Let's and go. I failed with a fifty-nine yes. over nice. fifty-five. Nice. 
Uh, so you gain some ground immediately. Like they are, like the one guy just like trips over himself and, they, and he turns to the other guy and he's like, you stay here, you stay here. We're not allowed to leave this post, but there's something going on with this chick. And he starts running after you. But you're making some distance. You get down the we we watch from the cop's perspective as he turns around this like uh, this like growth of bushes on the corner here, and we see you are now sixty yards away from him, fifty yards away from him, and you're just booking it down this this block. It's kind of like a residential block, but it's got a big street next to it um, uh, a with busy like street? two yeah like a busy street. It's like a yellow lane busy street, thirty five miles an hour, and there's uh, but there's still traffic lights on it, and you are. A decent amount away from him, but uh, yeah, it's it's up to you if you want to turn or keep sprinting. Give me your next athletics roll and tell me what you want to do. She wants to it, okay. The busy street is it like Myrtle Ave type, like where there's shops and stuff, or is it like a highway that cuts off a residential area? It's like a highway that cuts off a residential area because you're not really in like a shopping district. Like right off the hospital here yeah. is just like all you. Yeah, like basic utility, whatever, like factory kind of stuff. Yeah, so if there's, I was gonna say she ducks into a shop, but if that's not there, I think the better idea, instead of running on the straightaway. It's like warehouses and stuff. Yeah, so she's gonna duck down any like side street then in this residential area, hoping hoping to just like go down run one way, take a left, take a right, like just the cops are not gonna know which way she ran, so. So you're running down a side street or like an alleyway, basically? Yeah, like a side residential street and then turning off behind like a skinny in between two houses, you know. All right, and then give me an athletics around. check. All right. You got this. You got this. Do it. Oh. Oh. Thir- uh, do I get to keep the one that I added to it before? No. So I hit it. It's a 30. Yes. And I have a 30. 30 oh, on great. 30 on 30, 30. 30 on 30. I rolled another exactly 59 over 55. Oh, wow. Bizarre. Yeah. So you turn down this alleyway, and I'm going to say those two consecutive successes means that you lose this cop <laughs> in like the twisting and turning yes. of the yes. alleyway, you son of a bitch. That's awesome. <laughs> I yell back, smells like bacon. No, I'm just, I'm just hey, she's also a federal. So she starts sister. running, <laughs> twisting and turning through these alleyways, and she's gone. We go back to Roger. Roger, you are uh, going up these stairs, and we see you arrive, on, and it just says four. All right. On the door. This all has to happen very quickly because I assume that if the police are here for Bobby, uh, they're going to be up on this room as fast as possible. So what I want to do, and I'll spend willpower as needed, you tell me, is try and find a gurney with a patient on it that is unattended. Pull Bobby out and do the old switcheroo so that I can take Bobby uh like out another way so i want to like replace bobby with another body if i have to like roll the bodies and flip them or whatever that's fine i just want them to come in there and be like oh this he's fine he's sleeping turn the lights off or whatever that's my plan that's That's your plan plan. that's your plan you come out the utility door of the fourth floor in scrubs and a hat and you see that there is a general sort of um You're in an active hospital wing here now, and you look up and you can see a sign that says intensive care unit, ICU. So you you have walked into the intensive care unit and you see you're next to room 16. Uh, on the across the hallway from you is room 15. I'm sorry, to your to your right. So you know you kind of move to your left to get the Bobby's thing. You also see to your right, it's there's a line that points and says X-ray. There's an X-ray area on this floor. It would stand to reason to you that X-ray is a place you're more likely to see someone just waiting on a gurney, just like in a hallway, than anywhere else. Anywhere else in the ICU, it's gonna be patients in private rooms. So you can either try a private room patient, or you can try to pull someone that's in the hallway out that might be waiting for an X-ray. Yes, yeah, or imaging, I or other to, imaging. I, I want to get Bobby on a gurney because I feel like he'll be easier to maneuver than trying to push a hospital bed around. Um, but I want to leave a body in his place. I guess at the end of the day, maybe I'm overthinking it. Like, I just got to get Bobby on a gurney. Replacing his body isn't the old switcheroo. It's not Ferris Bueller's day off. <laughs> yeah, you're already being looked How for. How about this? Yeah. Let, let, let's do this. Rather than, yeah. rather than planning for this, let me just give you the, the straight dope as they say yeah. you're walking down the hallway you turn uh, as you're following room 16 17 18 19 20 you turn a corner and you see a long hallway where at the end is probably room 29 and you see two state police officers stationed outside of a room just both standing at attention guarding the room 
those are your guys. They are standing there guarding Bobby. They were probably there before the call, but now they're just on extra alert, basically. Okay. How much more rum do you have? <laughs> uh, any masks? Got any more doers in there? Any masks around? If I pass any fucking yeah, mask? Yeah, you can totally find, like, on a, uh, yeah, on a cart or something like that, you find a mask. Okay. Um... My my, this to show you how my brain works. My first <laughs> idea was to like go into room twenty seven or twenty eight and scale the window across into Bobby's room. There you go. Oh, there that's you go. where my brain's at. So <laughs> that's, that's first choice, plan. best choice. Let's that's try it. Choice. Yeah, best choice. Plan. So he comes. Okay. He walks up to like room twenty seven. Checks the check this chart outside the door. You know, like he does this all with the time on? with the mask on. Surgical mask on. Um, doesn't even uh, look at the cops and uh, grabs the uh, chart and walks into the room. Okay, I'm gonna do. A roll for these police officers right now. Alertness. Uh, oh, so you look at the thing, and the one looks to the side, looks at you, sees you looking at a chart. You walk into the room. You're paying no attention to them. You don't know what's happening behind you, but you're acting confidently. You come in. You see a woman, perhaps in her late seventies. She is intubated and is sitting in a hospital bed. Doesn't seem to be breathing on her own at the moment. Completely unconscious, and there are just boop. Boop. Amazing. Boop. The machines are going, but it's quiet in here. Okay. Um, he he closes the door behind him, uh, and he walks over to the window, trying to assess the window situation. There is not like a latch to open the window, unless you want to spend a willpower point to put a latch on this window. Let's put a latch. They're up. not really fans of having open windows. You can just open in these yeah, patients. Yeah, yeah, but they might have something you can like crack a little bit, and then Roger's just gonna fucking tear it off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this is, Give me a willpower uh, point. A willpower point. Um, what are you at right now? Uh, I'm pretty good. I, I'm at uh, I'm at ten, so I can I'll live forever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> Ten, you crack it and it let the air come in. Yeah, it peeks his head around. Uh, is it just hey, give me a, a flat check. wall? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I think I imagine. Yeah, it's sixty under eight thousand. <laughs> sixty under eight thousand. <laughs> you rip it off, uh, and it's actually good enough to not make that much noise. And whew, this, uh, you know, late summer, early fall air starts to, like blow into the hospital room, and. Um, you look out and you can see this is a, a brick hospital that has ledges at the windows where you could potentially step, but there is a little bit of climbing that's going to be involved, and there's nothing that will stop your four-story <laughs> fall to the ground. <laughs> Down below are a series of planted and manicured bushes. Okay. Up against the building. <laughs> I mean, this is so this fucking is crazy. <laughs> this is great. Um, all right, well... Next, the next thing on his mission is to jump from here to, to Bobby's room. I, I can't remember what room I said I went into. Did I go two over? You went into 27. So the next room over is Bobby's because 28 is across the hallway. Right. Okay. Uh, so it's a dex check. I'll spend two will uh, to, to add to my score because I, I got to make this jump. I mean, <laughs> that's still not 100%. Uh, oh, God. Do I spend three? I, I gotta spend three will. If I fall here, yeah, there's no. Oh, if I spend yeah, four okay. will, it's guaranteed. You, I'll take yeah. a chance with three will. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Sixty-two uh, under ninety uh, at that ooh. point. Oh, oh, good spend. Yes. So now you're down to six Worth will power points. Seven. Seven. This is total. actually a really seven. cool system because it sort of mimics. It, it, it simulates the metal exhaustion yeah. that you yeah. go through in a process, especially when things start to go wrong or like unexpected stuff comes up. Like this, it's perfect. This is yeah, I, I think it works really well. And and look, a, a lot of times, and, and in the blade system, it's stress. So it's still it's the right. same mechanic. Same. It's same not mechanic, that you get to a point yeah. where you just die. It's you get to a point where like you can't mentally you go can't on. Go You're on. so burnt from like all the stress you've been through. All right, yeah. so. You shimmy across, you get to this window, no more willpower points, and I will allow you to get into this window. Okay. Into Bobby's room. Get into Bobby's room, and what do I see? You slip into Bobby's room, and you see Bobby laying there on a cot. Out front, you see two police officers. Actually, the door is closed. Thank you. But there's a window next to it, like a slim window next to it. And you can see the back of one of the officers just kind of like looking side to side. You look down at Bobby and, oh, sorry. You look down at Bobby and uh, 
you see that he is not intubated. He is breathing on his own. He has a couple IVs in him. He seems to be, he seems to look okay. His color is pretty good considering. Uh, he seems like he looks pretty good. He just seems asleep or unconscious. If you, you know, if Neil was there, he could tell you what the readouts are saying uh, in terms of his blood pressure, his oxygen level, all that stuff. But you don't see anything that looks that that alarming. Uh, but there he is laying there, and uh, we'll cut back to Bobby. Let's cut back to Bobby. <laughs> Bobby, I need. All of a sudden, you're not there anymore. You're back in that room, and we see you again working this thing. I need one more oh, Sigint okay. roll. Okay, God, Sigint, let's go. Forty-three. Ooh, forty-three on forty-three. You're fucking oh kidding me! Oh my god! god. It's just a third time. Me. You're fucking wow. kidding me! You oh have god. to be. This, this is my me. day. <laughs> oh god! So amazing. Forty-three wow. on forty-three, yes. which pulls you to some numbers you did not understand. One, four, seven. You start to think that perhaps one has something to do with something you'll realize at the location. That that may help once you get to what this location has been identified as 210 East 32nd Street, where that would be on Manhattan. That's where you have to go in this in this war zone to get through to the to the palace. Um, four is this come this came after nine five. So six four and nine five. This was Abigail's disappearance and gives you sort of a, a, an outline of the time of of uh, year that you should be going to this place, and then the uh, the four. It comes into your mind that you cannot be in this place any longer without returning to like what you would consider like your physical body. You have to lead them here. The four is the four people that are needed to get here and to get through. You learn in this moment, you will not be able to lead the platoon to this location. You need a small force, a small force that is not identified as an American soldier, but can be identified as like a neutral party, basically. So immediately in your mind, you start thinking Roger, Vicky, Neil could show up at this place and appear neutral, like completely neutral in whatever conflict this is. And this will be essential to passing through this last like host of the lines or whatever. And so this realization gives you such shock of like that you have to communicate this to everybody and you start remembering where you are and what needs to happen. And in that moment, as maybe you're looking outside of the window and you can see the twin sons, Roger, you see Bobby's eyes open. They both open. <laughs> And Bobby, in your, in, you see two lights in the hospital ceiling that these two suns sort of re resolve into two inset ceiling lights above you. <laughs> you're unable to speak. You don't really understand what's happening, but you see you're in a hospital room and then leaning over you is the massive form of Roger Comstone. <laughs> God. The massive blonde form. <laughs> the massive blonde form of Roger Comstone. Roger, what do you do? All right, Roger says, hey, hey, buddy, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you talk? You cannot talk, but you can hear him. Do your legs work? Bobby. You start to move your legs and grabs. you have a little bit of feeling, but th they're so hard to move. Roger, you immediately see his left arm is handcuffed to the hospital bed. <sighs> just fucking bites the hand. <laughs> damn it. Uh, handcuffed to the hospital bed. Okay. Um, I mean, I want to rip the fucking thing right off. Uh, I mean, I can't rip the handcuffs, but I imagine that whatever it's attached to, Roger can just fucking do the metal, but that's going to start making a lot of noise. So here's my plan. I want to grab the phone that's in this room and call 911. Okay. You grab the phone that's in this room and call 911. Yep. 911, what's your emergency? Yes, I, I'm at Carney Hospital. I work in the laundry room in the basement. There is a madman down here with a gun. He's, he's, he can't 
can't see me. At, uh, sorry, at, at Carney yes, Hospital I, in the I'm basement. I'm on the third lower level of the basement. Carney Hospital. Ha- I know there are police officers here. Please, please save, please save us. And then hang up. Uh, <laughs> before they can say anything. Right. Amazing. Wow, that's great. <laughs> that is amazing. Um, okay, so uh, this call goes out that there is, you know, somebody downstairs. Roger Ducks, so and, like, you know, I'm, I'm not... Yeah, he sort of ducks. One of the officers, like, all of a sudden you hear this call come out over a walkie-talkie. One of them looks back. They seem to talk to each other for a second, and one of the officers moves off. And one stays there. Okay. You see, dangling from his pants, a set of keys. A set of keys. Um, okay. Um, and he's just like, Bobby, 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 come on. Neil, you start to see uh, police start arriving out in the front of the hospital as you're, like, driving 0.5 miles an hour <laughs> yeah. past the ER. <laughs> woo, woo, woo! These police uh, cars start pulling into the hospital, and cops start running in toward the front door. And we'll go back to you, Roger. Bobby, Bobby, come on, stand up. Stand up, Bobby, come on. This is it. Bobby, give me a power roll. Oh, power times five. Power times five. Oh, God. Not leaving okay. you on the battlefield, Bobby. Oh, 46 under 55. Wow. 4,655, you are able to move your legs. Oh, my God. To, like, okay. push yourself off of this bed. Oh. 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 So he starts sitting up. Roger, what do you do? Okay. Uh, he's going to, like, pull a curtain so that, uh, like, if anyone opened the door, they wouldn't see Roger standing there. And He's going to bring Bobby over to the door, put Bobby's hand on the handle of the door, and start to, and just, like, open the door and then stand behind the curtain and pull out a gun. Wow. <sighs> So Bobby, it looks like Bobby opened the door. Right. Opened the door uh-huh. and then collapsed. So immediately, like this, this, this officer turns and he's like, "What the fuck?" And he comes around uh, to you, Bobby, and you are out of your bed. You're reaching across from your bed. Is that I what's kinda, happening? Yeah, like if he yeah. stood up, I pushed him over towards the door and put his hand on hand on the door. Can't, and I can't stand, right? I'm just kind of like, uh, whoa, whoa, resting. whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, hey, uh, he's away! Uh, Before he can even talk, awake. Robert uh, Roger puts the gun to the back of the cop's head. Don't talk. And he's looking out like at the nurses before he can yell anything. Ah! Yeah. And then he feels this gun on the back of his head. Right. Roger closes the door with his Son foot, like pushes gosh. the door shut. <laughs> pushes the door shut. Uh, he grabs the uh, the the handcuff key. He says, "Nothing, nothing has to happen here. You're going to be just fine." He reaches over, unhooks <laughs> uh, the guy, and says, "Take off your motherfucking clothes right <laughs> now." <laughs> And he pushes the gun like right into the guy's skull. You got a wife? You got kids? You'll never see him again! And he, wham! He's going to make a move. Okay. So he makes a move with his elbow, bam, to knock the gun up into the air. This is going to be an opposed unarmed combat roll. Is this against my dodge? This is against your unarmed combat. Against my opposed. Can I aid? Can I aid? (laughs) Aid? Uh, I'll spend another will to add 10. Another will to add 10. Okay, here we go. And I failed. Oh, no. What is your failure? Uh, I, Wait. I, okay, so it's a double It's a double failure. I failed as well. Okay. So he goes to, like, buff it, uh, the gun out of you. It doesn't really change the situation. Like, you're knocked back a little bit, but he is still... Uh, well, how about this? We'll say he successfully knocks you back uh, away from uh, him. Uh, and in so, and he goes to reach for his gun, and in his panic, he pulls his gun out of his holster, and it slips from his grasp and hits the ground. What do you do? Uh, I'll tase him. You pull out the <laughs> taser and tase him. Nice. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> so with your other hand, you pull out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he goes to the ground. You can see he's like way more controlled than most people would be when they're shot with a taser. Like he kind of like like he's done this before. Yeah, he's, he's, right? he's been like, and yeah. he's just like he like leans down and his his, his whole body is shaking. Bobby, in that moment, you're like hazy, and and you look up, and you see in the wall across from you a door. Like a door that's not out into the hallway, (laughs) but that is in the middle of the room, like a closet or something, maybe. And you're drawn to it. I I stumble towards it. Roger, you're tasing this guy, and you keep it going because you want to see that piss. (laughs) You want to see that piss. for another bottle of doors. (laughs) (laughs) He brings out another bottle of doors. You, You look over, and you see Bobby is handcuffed. 
and he's moving toward a door. That door was not there when you walked into this room. Oh, oh man. shit. Bobby, Bobby. Uh, so Tazen, uh, fuck, I want to put the cop's uniform on Bobby. Bobby, no! Uh, he's going to... He's still handcuffed I'm to the bed. You have the keys to the handcuffs, and he's moving toward this door. Uh, does the officer have handcuffs on him? The officer? Yeah. No, the officer has no handcuffs on him. His handcuffs are on Bobby. His handcuffs are on Bobby. All right, so I've, I've tased him. I've incapacitated him for a second, enough so that I'm going to grab the keys and, and undo Bobby and try and handcuff the guy instead to, okay. to something. All right, great. Uh, give me a roll. What would the hell would that be? Oh, Jesus dexterity, Christ. I guess, again. Dexterity. Let's I'm do not going to spend again. will because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm due for a good roll, and I failed. Oh, Man. All right, so you get, no. Bobby, you get Bobby out. You get his... 62 uh, you over get the, 60. Oh, you get the oh, handcuff no. on him. 62 over 60. You get the handcuff on him. You're l- lifting the handcuff up to the bar of the hospital bed, and wham! He just comes up at you and gets a shot in, and I rolled a two. Oh, fuck. He connects fully with your jaw, and uh, and that that is what represents your failure on the, uh, on the dexterity check. You're knocked Ugh. back. He has handcuff on one hand, and it's dangling and opening on the other end, and he's like starting to stagger up, but now you can act. You can try again, basically, yeah. what, or Tasting you can do something else to him if you want. Yeah, I'm going to kick him in the head. <laughs> Kick him in the head. Give me an unarmed combat. Not opposed. He is not in the position to dodge. Fifty-five right now. critical success. Yeah. Critical oh. success. Bam! And then blood <laughs> flies up from his face as he goes back. At this moment, Bobby reaches out, opens a door. Roger, you know the placement of this door. The only place this could go is room twenty-seven. He opens up the door, and it is not room twenty-seven. It is a hallway that looks like the hospital. But it's just a hospital no, hallway. No, do not Fuck. go in there, Bobby. Uh, uh, no, he's Bobby, like, Bobby, no, 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 Bobby. No, and he just, <laughs> Fuck, I, we cannot go in there unless it's the only <laughs> place to go. Uh, fuck. I'm going. I'm going. I'm reaching. I'm reaching for the door. I'm opening. All right, now the Bobby's door. been undone. So Bobby, you open it. You could walk in if you want. Uh, I am. I mean, Three, am I drawn two, to it? I'm, what am I drawn to it for? I'm just drawn. I'm just drawn to it. I'm going. You are convinced this is the way this out. This is the way out. This is the way out. Can I speak? I can't speak yet. This no. is. Uh, 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 walking through. Bobby walks through. Roger, you got three seconds. Do you let him walk through, or do you physically restrain him? Three, two, one. Bobby walks through. He walks. He steps out into this hallway, and Bobby, you look left, you look right, and you see a a series of doors, and they're marked with, uh, it it looks like... uh, like the back part of like a cardiovascular uh, uh, floor or something like that. It is just a completely different place in the hospital. Okay. And you start walking down this hallway. Roger, do you follow him out or do you stay in the room? <sighs> Fuck me. I mean, it's going to be impossible now to get out of here. Um. <laughs> Join me. Join me. Take the ride. Join Take me. The ride. What are we doing? I don't want to go in there. I, I think Roger is wily enough to get out, but it kind of be- defeats the whole point. The whole point was to get Bobby out, and Bobby has gone a different way. Um, I truly don't know what to do here. I mean, I'm I'm barely conscious, right? I'm just like I'm just I, I'm literally just getting up and walking, like I'm not even really knowing where I am, to be honest. So it's just. I'm just kind of stumbling. You're running on pure instinct right now. Yeah. And, you know, Roger, you might have to do the same. I mean, this is one of those situations. The door is starting to close behind him. Um, so I can't grab him anymore. He's gone. Uh, He's I'm, gone. I'm in my, my hospital You don't gown. even see him. He has started walking down this hallway. Roger I goes up to the door and looks out. out the hallway. Yeah, hanging out. I'm just stumbling. You go up and you look uh, down the hallway and you see little marker indicators that indicate that this looks like it's the second floor of the hospital, a cardiovascular floor. And it is the, seems to be like the janitorial, whatever, the, the, the maintenance uh, access to another floor of the hospital. Impossibly. Give me a sanity check. Okay. And then I want to look out the door where the cops were. Like the hallway of the room. I failed my sanity check, obviously. Oh, fuck. Okay. 
Uh, so you, you feel like, yeah, you fear that this could be the night floors again or something. <sighs> but it looks like this hospital. It does not look like the night floors. You take two points of sanity damage. Okay. And you, as you look down the, uh, if you look back out the other door, you said, yeah, um, you see that there are police officers running toward this room. All right, what was uh, Dallin's name? His first name? Richard. Richard. Uh, he goes over to the cop. He's like handcuffed to the gurney or whatever, and he's coming to, and he's like, Doctor Richard Dallin is a fraud. Anything you've heard is a lie. Remember that. I could have killed you here, and I didn't. Dr. Richard Dallin is lying. And then he looks at the door, and he looks back out the window, and he says, the only way out is through. <sighs> and he goes through the door. Yes. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Not see that. Oh, my God. <laughs> That was not what I was expecting. What are we not what I Where are we? I don't know. This <laughs> is a draft in here. I got a hospital gown on. I <laughs> just had a hospital gown. Amazing. We'll pick it up there next time. Later. <laughs> Good night.